Good morning again and uh, welcome back to Concerned Citizens Media. Uh, I have some news to share with you and uh, some video at the end of uh, the reading material. Uh, here are the news and the concerned citizens media comment for December 29, 2020. Uh, Jal Morrow parents are still in the enemy hands and their whereabout is still unknown to their relatives and friends. The Abi Ahmed administration has been conducting his merciless attacks against Oromos on their own land. Jal Marro parents do not know about their son for almost 17 years, but still they are subjected to Abi Ahmed security, uh, inhumane treatment, including the burning of their house with their belongs, belongings at this stage of their lives. Usually, Oromos are respectful for senior citizens. However, our enemies will not stop their atrocities against all Oromos unless they are removed or eliminated from Oromia. Our enemies' lifespan depend on the strength and the conviction of Oromos at home and around the globe. We must say enough is enough to Abi Ahmed's grave human rights violations that have been imposed on our people. Twenty-nine Ethiopian federal police officers reported killed by F1 bomb explosion on December 27, 2020 while they were on their patrol vehicles. The incident occurred in Fincha Wallega in Western Oromia. No one claimed responsibility for this attack. East and West Wallega in Oromia have been under Abi Ahmed's constant military command post for more than two years. Ethiopian-Sudan conflict. The Sudanese Defense Force claimed recapturing about 70% of the settlement from Ethiopia and a vow to continue its fight until it sees the remaining 30% of the settlement. Asmro, Shaba, Lakar, Arka, and uh, Ille are, are some of the settlements uh, recaptured by the Sudanese army. Uh, Ethiopian government is downplaying, at least publicly, uh, this Sudanese serious violation of Ethiopian territories. Abiy Ahmed and his newly formed Prosperity Party are tied with fighting domestic conflict that could be resolved through dialogues and reconciliation. Uh, credit, partial credit for Sudanese, uh, Sudan Tribune. So the, the situation uh, between uh, Ethiopia and Sudan is serious. Uh, uh, Sudanese brought massive uh, military equipment and military personnel to the border and also Eritrea is a massive military uh, force close to Ethiopia Sudan border so the situation is serious but Ethiopia is so far is uh, downplaying it publicly at least Asimba Democratic Party 
demanded the removal of Eritrean forces from the Tigray region before accepting the invitation to join the provisional administration of Makale. A Simba party statement said, it is immoral and shameful for a Simba party to engage in any administration while the Tigray people are killed, tortured, their properties destroyed, looted, and uh, uh, face other inhuman treatment by Eritrean invaders. This Asimba party call on Eritrean expose Abi Ahmed and Isaias Afawarki's denial about Eritrean Defense Force involvement in the Tigray war. Even today, the New York Times reported that Eritrean soldiers committed war crimes in the Tigray region war. So the truth is coming out slowly thanks to the war survivals, eyewitnesses, and technic technological advancement. Even though Eritrea and uh, Ethiopia deny, uh, the evidence is clear. Eritreans are in Makali fighting alongside with the uh, Ethiopian soldiers. And the Americans said, and the Asimba party is from Tigray, it said, and the New York Times already reported. So it's clear, even though the, the Ethiopians and the Tyrians deny. Ethnic conflict could be expanding to the Somali and the Afar regions. Somalia region released a threatening statement to Afar region after after groups armed, trained, and financed by Afar region carried out attack in city zone Afdam district in Somalia region and killed 21 Somalians and injured 25 of them. The Somalian government statement states that Somalia will avenge these killings and protect its residents from further similar attacks in the future. Ethnic cleansing became common in Ethiopia under Abiy Ahmed's leadership. Concerned citizens' media calls upon all Ethiopians to, to demand the end of Abiy Ahmed's administration before the worst is happening in that country. The Ethiopian government army claims killing two senior TPLF military leaders and their army units. They are Brigadier General Kabad uh, Sharife and Brigadier General Sahaye Marcus. This Ethiopian government claim never been confirmed by other independent media. In California, a little robot's car will deliver pizza, groceries, and medicine as a paid service in 2021 for the first time. San Francisco and the Silicon Valley streets have been bustling with self-driving vehicles from an array of companies for years. But those vehicles have only been issued permits for testing on public roads. Now, the robotic startup uh, Nuro has an official stamp of approval to start its paid service, according to the California Department of Motor Vehicles. Now, the Mountain View-based company Nuro, which raised 500 million earlier this year can deploy its vehicles for paid deliveries. The deliveries will start in two communities near uh, Nuro's headquarters. Uh, David Estrada, 
Silicon Valley lawyer and chief legal policy officer at Nuro said, we are excited to see these benefits grow into everyday lives of the people in our communities, in the places we call home. Their expansion could have an impact uh, on delivery drivers whose livelihood depend on such types of work. This is the last one is concerned citizens comment. So yes, it could impact uh, delivery drivers, drivers delivering pizzas to different locations. So if this unmanned uh, robotic vehicle starts operating widely everywhere, it could be dangerous for uh, employees. But Nobody's gonna stop it anyway. We are living with technologies, okay. Uh, Dr. James Phillips, an emergency room doctor at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center has been removed from his duty after publicly criticizing President Donald Trump's drive-by around the hospital after his coronavirus diagnosis. I am honored to have worked there and look forward to new opportunities. I stand by my words and I regret nothing, Dr. Phillips wrote. Dr. Phillips had called the president's drive-by completely unnecessary and said, Trump's put lives at risk for political theater in his October tweet. Uh, this is a comment from Concerned Citizens Media about the action of the president on this doctor for removing him for his comment. Taking revenge action on someone for expressing his or her opinion is the sign of dictatorship and it should be rejected and condemned by all human beings. Luckily, the American people removed President Donald Trump for showing repeated interest in such dictatorial behaviors and for his other unacceptable conduct, such as lying without uh, any feeling of shame, intimidating and threatening journalists calling the media names, and so on, in the last four years. So, that's all the reading part of the news. Now, let's see the videos. So, I have about three videos. The first one is about uh, incidents around Christmas in uh, uh, Nashville. I think that guy is uh, died. It's like a suicide. Let's listen. This is also. Joining us now to talk more about the investigation is Dr. Errol Southers a Homeland Security and counterterrorism expert. He is the director of the Safe Communities Institute at the University of Southern California Sol Price School of Public Policy. He is also a former FBA SWAT agent and Santa Monica police officer. Dr. Southers, thanks for joining us on News Nation again. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Southers, if we could go back to uh, last night, we asked you about your first impression if you were an investigator who was arriving at the scene. Given what we now know about the attacker, that it appears he was a, a lone wolf and appears to have been trying to send a message, what kinds of questions would you be asking now? Well, the big question is always why. And still, we have an individual here who showed capacity and capability. He was described as an electronics and alarm system expert. He was an IT guy. In fact, some of his pe interviews of people who knew him back to high school called him kind of nerdy. He's a person that also in 1993 had an explosives handling permit, so he understood explosives. So he understood how to make an explosive device oh, this and is put a, a timer on it, we believe. 
will cause the exploration of, of Nashville. This was devised, or I should say carried out by a plan that was obviously very detailed. He had an RV that he kept in his yard. He built the fence around his yard some time ago and then put a gate on it. When neighbors asked him why he moved the RV into their yard, he said because people were trying to break into it. But again, this is where he built the bomb. So he drives the bomb to downtown Nashville on Christmas Day with an audible announcement to move people away. You have to ask why. If you're going to commit suicide, why do that? Why not, if you're going to do that, do it in your home? Again, how lucky he was or the skill set he had to move that device from his home to downtown without it having it explode prematurely. So we have to ask why. There's a reason why he wanted people to know he was going to do this. He picks Christmas Day in an urban area, and it takes up and becomes national news. And that was his intent. We still want to know why. You mentioned the explosives permit. What kind of betting goes into giving someone that type of a permit? I don't. I can't speak to that kind of detail with regards to how you get a permit for that. I would imagine it's quite extensive in terms of a background check. He got it in 1993. We do know it was due to expire in 1998, so it was a five-year permit. Uh, much like anything else, I would imagine that they go do a very extensive background check. And also, you would have to justify why you need it. So he obviously met the criteria. He was granted the permit, and that would give him access to certain materials that you and I couldn't get. Dr. Southers, when we're talking about the location to the AT&T Transmission Building, it seems like that may be a key when it comes to investigators looking into the reasons why. Is that correct? I think it is a key because he, of all places he decided to drive, he put the vehicle there. There were a number of businesses that were there. The nexus at, at some point may be his father. As we all know, his father worked for Bell South, which later became acquired by AT&T. His father passed away in 2011. So I would imagine that they're looking to find out if there's any kind of adversarial relationship between his father and AT&T over the years that could possibly be a reason for why he would have gone there. Very quickly, do that you believe is, uh, the timing of when this bomb was exploding. detonated has any bearing on this case being so early in the morning when the streets were empty? I do. I think that he clearly wanted to commit the act of suicide and didn't want to harm anyone else. So he moved it away from his home. He went to the location on Christmas morning in the middle of a global pandemic, sets the device to explode at 6.30, giving people 15 minutes to get out with an additional 15 tacked on. Everybody was able to get away, and fortunately, no one else was seriously injured or killed. Dr. Southers, thank you again for your expertise and analysis. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you for having me. So what was your first job? Oh, okay, I guess... The, the explosion in uh, Nashville. The next one is uh, Trump signing, and this will be a problem. Uh, it's gonna create a problem between U.S.-China relation. It talks about. Tibet, Dalai Lama. Let's listen. Maybe slave away cutting grass or shoveling snow. Donald Trump has less than one month left in office, but you cannot accuse him of being a lame duck president. In fact, he's been quite the opposite of late, very busy, even around Christmas. After much back and forth, the president of the United States signed a $2.3 trillion bill to fund the U.S. government. This bill also had something for China, something that China would not like. Donald Trump has signed a bill into law a bill that backs the Free Tibet Movement. It says Washington should build an international coalition for the rights of Tibetans. The bill also calls for a U.S. consulate in Tibet. This law spells out America's new policy on Tibet, a policy that steps on China's toes. On Gravitas tonight, we'll tell you 
what America plans to do, why China does not like any of it, and where India stands in the new Tibet game. So first things first, what is the new American law? It is called the Tibetan Policy and Support Act of 2020. Let me tell you what it says. Point number one, it makes five broad points. Let's start with point number one. It talks about the next Dalai Lama. Who will it be? Who will choose him or her? The United States says Tibetans have the right to pick the next Dalai Lama, not the Chinese state. Beijing cannot dictate its choice. So according to this new law, if China announces the next Dalai Lama, America will not recognize him or her. This will not go down well with China. It hasn't, in fact. Let's come to point number two, the rights of Tibetans. America wants to build an international coalition, a coalition that will recognize and safeguard the interests of Tibetans. Again, the perfect way to needle China. Point number three, sanctions. This bill says that America will sanction Chinese officials if they try to appoint the next Dalai Lama, which includes economic and visa sanctions. Point number four, a U.S. consulate in Tibet something that gives America strategic access to this region. The new law says America will build a consulate in Lhasa, the capital of Tibet. What if China does not agree to all of this? The bill has an answer. China will not be allowed to open any new consulates in the United States until America is allowed to have a consulate in Tibet. Point number five, the role of civil society. The U.S. bill wants to empower NGOs. It will assist organizations that support Tibetan communities in Tibet. By the way, do you know, China too has NGOs. They're called Gongos, G-O-N-G-O. That's government-organized, non-governmental organization. Talk about oxymorons. Anyway, coming back to the U.S. bill, what Donald Trump has signed is a set of unprecedented measures, and they are enforceable by law in America. What happens when Donald Trump leaves office? No change, hopefully. There is bipartisan support for action against China. This bill was passed unanimously by the U.S. Senate last week. What about China? How does it view America's new law? Not favorably, of course. The wolf warrior in chief is the face of Chinese response. China noticed the relevant bills signed by the U.S., bills related to Tibet, and firmly opposes them. The Tibet issue concerns China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. It purely belongs to China's internal affairs and does not allow any external forces to interfere. The Chinese government is unwavering in its determination to safeguard its national sovereignty and national security and to develop in its own interests. To note his words, sovereignty and territorial integrity, he says. External forces interfering in internal affairs. Coming from China, this is a bit rich. Even as these words were spoken, China continued to challenge India's territorial sovereignty and integrity in Ladakh. That standoff is very much on. Even as the statement came from Beijing, China continued to interfere in the domestic politics of Nepal. They've sent a senior official to Kathmandu to interfere. China's transgressions are serious and many. And every time it is questioned, its defense is one the one China policy, Beijing's favorite go-to argument. So here's some breaking news for China. America has dumped that one China policy. And it may be just a matter of time before others follow suit. As of today, this is just an American law. It applies to America. It cannot be legally enforced on any other country. And yet, it's a powerful message to China. It says three things, basically. One, that there is bipartisan consensus in Washington for Tibet and against China. Two, American lawmakers are ready to provide legal backing for decisions against China. They have done here. And three, now this is a law, it must be enforced. So whatever Joe Biden stand on China be, he'll have to follow this law. He, can, he called the Indo-Pacific Asia-Pacific. That's, that's what he's done. But he cannot change the stand on Tibet without changing this law. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move. Okay, that's, uh, that's, I want a second term. that's a challenge, a uh, diplomatic challenge between uh, United States and uh, China. Uh, already has so many challenges, as I reported before. Uh, visa restrictions, 
uh, trade, fighting, a lot of a lot of issues now. Trump and the Congress signed on uh, Tibetan issue. Tibet, yes, there is issue Chinese abuse and uh, Dalai Lama uh, suffered a lot. Tibetans suffered a lot. So this may be as a positive uh, development for that issue. But China will fight it aggressively. And uh, we have to wait and see what will be the end. And uh, the, the last one for today is uh, United Nations General uh, Message for uh, New Year for 2021. Uh, Antonio Guterres. Let's see what he says. Dear friends, 2020 has been a year of trials, tragedies, and tears. COVID-19. There we go. Dear friends, 2020 has been a year of trials, tragedies, and tears. COVID-19 appended our lives and plunged the world into suffering and grief. So many loved ones have been lost, and the pandemic rages on, creating new waves of sickness and death. Poverty, inequality, and hunger are rising. Jobs are disappearing and debts are mounting. Children are struggling. Violence in the home is increasing and insecurity is everywhere. But the new year lies ahead, and with it we see rays of hope. People extending a helping hand to neighbors and strangers. Frontline workers giving their all. Scientists developing vaccines in record time. Countries making new commitments to prevent climate catastrophe. If we work together in unity and solidarity, this rays of hope can reach around the world. That's the lesson of this most difficult year. Both climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic are crises that can only be addressed by everyone together as part of a transition to an inclusive and sustainable future. The central ambition of the United Nations for 2021 is to build a global coalition for carbon neutrality, net zero emissions by 2050. Every government, city, business and individual can play a part in achieving this vision. Together, let's make peace among ourselves and with nature, tackle the climate crisis, stop the spread of COVID-19 and make 2021 a year of healing. Healing from the impact of a deadly virus, healing broken economies and societies, healing divisions and starting to heal the planet. That must be our New Year's resolution for 2021. I wish you all a happy and peaceful new year from the United Nations. Okay, thank you, uh, Antonio, Antonio Guterres, United Nations General, for a uh, uh, fruitful advice for uh, 2021 and uh, to do our parts to make the world uh, enjoyable, uh, peaceful for all of us, and clean energy, and to do our part uh, to prevent COVID-19 from spreading. Uh, to heal uh, to one another, uh, division, uh, and uh, you know, he just talk about a lot of stuff, the environment. So, as we are a few days away from New Year's, but still. Uh, still time to have a resolution for the new year and uh, concern the citizens media I appreciate Antonio Guterres for his message and uh, I will be finishing by his call for unity against the disease 
against environmental pollution, division. So that's all I have for today. Thank you for listening Concerned Citizens Media. Still appreciate your comment, share, like, dislike. Uh, send me factual based news. Uh, so I will be back again with other news and the video. So long everyone. Stay safe.